after the Second World War, when young people from all over the world who were really troubled started flocking to Teze, to the monastery, to just become silent. They had this problem, how are we going to pray together? How are we going to sing together? We have so many different languages. And they said, well, let us just choose one or two verses from the Bible, and we can sing it in many different languages, and we just repeat it over and over, and in that way, everybody can sing together. So we're going to experience some of this way of singing. We're going to listen and sing together. You must please sing along. Don't just listen. Sing along with this song that we're going to listen to now, and sing along, Bless the Lord, my soul. And you can remain seated for that. And then we're going to have a psalm reading. A few of our young pilgrims will read verses from Psalm 25, Rose, Shanash, Ayanda, Goodwill, and Relebohile. They will read the different verses of Psalm 25. Then we will sing, The kingdom of God is justice and peace, also a verse from Romans. And then we will have six minutes of silence, where we can just pray in silence and then we will have some intercessory prayers where we pray for other people and for the world. Also, our pilgrims will help us with that. Kanyese, Rafilwe, Fatima, Mulefe, and Resiri Sitwe. They will read five different intercessions. And after each intercession, we can respond by saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Or you can say it if you like in Afrikaans, Here, we're ons gebed. And then we will have our scripture reading from Romans 12, and also we will have it in different languages, as is the custom in Teze, and Mamelo, Theodore, Asake, Tselane, and Umkosi will read the scripture readings for us. Thank you uh, to our programs for helping us. I know it feels strange to stand in front of strange people and to read something, but you are blessing us this morning uh, with your presence here. So let us sing this song, Bless the Lord My Soul, and as you hear it, maybe it's not, you're not familiar with it, but try to sing along. It's very, very inviting, and it invites you to pray and to sing with this song. So you can just stand next to me. Uh, so usually when we would read the psalm in Teze, we would sing Alleluia uh, between each uh, verse, uh, but we're not going to do that now. We're just going to listen to Psalm 25. In you, Lord, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. 
No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your path. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. So let us sing together, the kingdom of God is justice and peace. silent prayer.
Ask kan hier sê, reveal way, Fatima en Mulefi en Ritsiritsi twee, to come and do the intercessory prayers for us. The words will also be on the wall and you can just respond with Lord hear our prayer or Jere oor ons gebed. God, our Father, you never take back your call and your gifts. Renew our hope. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, make us thirsty for justice. May we work for your kingdom to come where there is exploitation and inhumanity. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you created the heaven and the earth and saw they were very good. May we care faithfully for all you have entrusted to us. Father of all, for the sake of the lowly, for the victims of domestic or xenophobic violence, for the refugees from conflict or natural disasters around the world, we pray to you, Lord. God our Father, give us a long name a longing for the unity of the church, renew the communion among Christians for the world to believe in your love. We will now have our scripture reading. I ask Mamelo, Theodore, Asake, Tselane, and Omkosi to join me on the pulpit. Ngabini, Ibani nefute lo moya, ikunze ni ingosi. Vuyani ni netemba nje, ni nyamezele ezimbandezele ni zenu, ni tandaze ni ngayiki. Zibonelele neni intuelo za makolwa, ni zikataze kukubuka indwe ndwe. Basikelele ni abani chuchisayo, sikelele ni Ninga kalekisi, vuyani na bavuyayo, nilile na balilayo, ibani moyamunye, eli lilizu lingosi. A voorlesing e Paulus' sendbrief an die Romeine, 12 vers 9, tot 16a. Die liefde moet op recht wees, verafski wat sleg is, en hou vast aan wat goed is. Betoon hartelijke, broederlijke liefde teen oor mekaar, bewees eerbied teen oor mekaar, en wees mekaar daarin tot voorbeeld. Moen jy in jylle toewedding verslap nie, bly altyd geestriftig, dien die jyre, Verblij jylle in die hoop, staan vast in verdrukking, vol hart in gebed. Moe nie die mede gelovig is in hylle moed, nood en leed hylle toe op gasvrijheid. Seen hylle vervolgers, ja, seen hylle. Moet hylle nie vervloek nie, wees blij met die wat blij is en treur saam met die wat treur. Wees eensgesind onder mekaar. 
die woord van die Heere. A reading from the book of Romans. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Ho ba loa bokenya ba Roma. Le rato le hlake bi kaketse. Ho ya mbobe go marala mbotla. Rata nang jo le ka bana ba motho le hlodisane ha le hlompana. Le sekela ba botswa le mpele be mafolofolo le sebeletsa morena ka moya o tshesehang. Tabang ka ya lona. Mamela matsunye ho di se san tapelo ke nyan le tso ho thusong ya badume di ba hlokang thabelang ho amohela ba ete hlona lo fatsang ba le hlorisang le ba hlona lo fatse le sekela ba rohaka thabang le ba thabileng lang le ba lang utlwanang ka ho tlala kile o lentswe la morena Go ba se Roma di shum nagbeli, sta u kala gumfika, sti ne go shum ne skup. Lutambo lufanele lupete gutendisa, donzan logubi ni bambisi se logushe. Tanzana ni nge lutambo lwebu zaloane, ni chagi se la ni nge gushoni pan. Kutala ni inga pelelwa umjanja. Ni vute emoyeni, ni konde ingose. Thogotani etembeni, ni begetele elusizini, ni tinisele njalo emtanda zweni. Hlanga nyelani inalabangrile egusole ni guabo, ni kutale egu ngeniseni tihambi. Busisani laba ni tingelago unlupa, yebo ni busise ninga talegizi. Ni chabule na laba chabulago, ni kale na laba kalago, ni bambisane ngamoya munye nongi. This pilgrimage of Teze that is taking part, that took part in Cape Town this year, but in different years take, will take part in different parts of the world, is called a pilgrimage of trust, a pilgrimage of trust on earth. So how do you learn to trust people? How do you build trust? We are actually taught not to trust people. The world actually teaches us to be suspicious of people, to be afraid of other people, people who are different from us. From a small age, we also learn to be competition with one another. We, we learn to be 
better or more successful than other people. It is also our natural instinct that when we feel threatened, we will either fight or we will run away. That is our instinct. But this paragraph in Romans starts with a command. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. This is how trust is built. Hating what is evil and clinging to what is good. Because what is evil? Evil is never, ever the other person. Evil is not even our enemies. Evil is not even those who oppress us or persecute us. Evil is never a person. Evil never has a skin. The evil is that which harms people. The evil is always that which oppresses other people. The evil is that which shuts people out. Religion can be evil. Religion can be evil if it harms other people. Religion can be evil if it oppresses people. If it shuts people out. In South Africa, in the Dutch Reformed Church, there was a time when our church did that. It said that only white people were welcome in the Dutch Reformed Church. That is evil. And it's not that the people in the church were evil. They were normal, sinful people like you and me. They worshipped God. They loved Jesus. They read the Bible. They asked for the Holy Spirit to guide them. It was people like my father. My father was also a minister in the Dutch Reformed Church. He was a man who devoted his life to spreading the good news of the gospel. He started his ministry in the Transkei among Kosa-speaking churches. But see, it is not people who are evil. People are sinful. They make mistakes, but they are not evil. Ideas are evil. Ideas can be evil. Ideas like, you do not belong here. Ideas like, those people are not like us. Ideas like, those people are our enemies. We must reject those evil ideas. We must hate those evil ideas. And we must cling to what is good. And what is good? Love. Love is good. Loving another person is good. Even though that person is sinful. Even if that person is my enemy. Even if that person oppresses me or persecutes me, I must cling to that person. We must not love the evil things that someone does. We must not love injustice. We must hate it. But we must cling to the person. We must cling to each other because that person is made in the image of God. Because Jesus Christ gave his life for that person. Because the Holy Spirit is calling that person to faith and to new life in Christ. Paul even goes so far as to says in Romans that we should be devoted to one another and 
honor the other person above ourselves. What that means practically is that when someone is doing something terrible to me, something that I don't agree with, something that is wrong, or, or even sinful, or even evil, I must ask the Holy Spirit to show me and to give me the love of God for this person. The grace of Jesus Christ for this person. I must cling to the good in that person while hating the evil he is doing. Verse 12 says, Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. This pilgrimage had the theme, together sharing hope. And that's such a wonderful thing for me. Just the thought, I've never thought of it this way. You can share hope. You can share hope. Hope is something to be shared with each other. Hope is something that we find in each other, in our fellowship with one another, in our caring for each other, in our love. Hope is not something we find in the world out there. We will not find hope in the news. We will not find hope in politics or in the economy. We will not find hope in our circumstances. The only things we will find in the world out there are optimism and pessimism. Optimism when something good happens and pessimism when something bad happens. So if we win the rugby, then we are optimistic. And when we lose, we are pessimistic. That's the only things we find in the world out there. But hope is found not in our circumstances or the world out there, but in each other. We share hope. Hope is found in fellowship. We taste hope when we sit at the communion table and share the bread and the wine. Hope is found and shared when we do what verse 13 says, share with the Lord's people who are in need practice hospitality the greek word for hospitality is philo xenia philo means to love and xenia means the stranger and that's the privilege that our church had this week of loving a stranger of saying i don't know who's going to come and stay in my house i don't know where they're coming from what language they're going to speak but they are welcome i'm going to love the stranger that is hospitality and we are so ashamed and it was said more than once at our pilgrimage of trust by the xenophobic attacks that's the opposite of hospitality philoxenia means loving the strangers xenophobia means fearing the stranger we are so ashamed and we must confess to our brothers and sisters in the rest of africa that we have sinned against them with these attacks. And even if we did not attack people ourselves, we did not do enough to build trust in our country, to build a culture of hospitality, to love the stranger. We must practice that. That's something you can get out of practice. You must stay in practice. You must practice it often to love the stranger. Verse 14 to 16 says, Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. And then Paul even goes on to say, Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. So often we think of our society as a hierarchy. We think there are people above us and there are people below us. Perhaps we think the people who oppress us or who persecute us or wrong us, perhaps we think they are above us. And then we curse them. 
but we should bless them. Or perhaps we see people in a, in a low position and, and we are conceited and we pity them. But we should be humble, Paul says. Also, he says, rejoice with those who rejoice. Sometimes we can see people that are having good fortune, it's going well with them, and then we are jealous of them. We think they are above us because they're more fortunate in their life. But Paul also says, mourn with those who mourn. Sometimes we see people, it's really, they're going through a difficult time, and we pity them. We say, oh, thank you, Jesus, that I am not as unfortunate as they are. We think they are below us because of their misfortune. But Paul says, no. You are in harmony with one another. Around the Lord's table, we are all equal. There's no above and no below. We are all equal in the Lord's eyes. So rejoice with those who rejoice. And mourn with those who mourn. There is no above or below. This table is a table where we all gather as sinners. Around this table, we are all beggars who are hungry and thirsty for the grace of God. And that is why Paul goes on later in Romans 12 to say that when your enemy is hungry, give him something to eat. When your enemy is thirsty, give him something to drink. That is what we do when we get up from the Lord's table. We go out into the world and we can even give our enemy something to eat and our enemy something to drink because that is what the Lord did for us. When we were still sinners, when we were still the Lord's enemies, the Lord gave us His body and His blood. This is the only way in which evil can be overcome by good, by the grace of Jesus. The grace of Jesus that does not repay evil with evil, that does not repay hatred with more hatred, that does not repay violence with more violence and revenge, but that repays evil with love. The only salvation there is for a world full of fear, a, full, a world full of hatred and violence, is a world wherein the grace of Jesus helps us to trust again. To reject the ideas of hate, to reject the fear, and to cling to the good, to cling to the good in other people. The only way to peace and harmony in this world, the only way to trust on earth is the Jesus way. If we do the same unto people as Jesus did unto us, to give our enemy something to eat when he is hungry and something to drink when he is thirsty, only through the grace of Jesus will the good overcome the 